how to make a naked GoPro for under $300, that coming up right after this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Ryan. On this channel, we do a lot of tips, tricks, and reviews, mostly drone and photography related. If that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing, it's greatly appreciated. As mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna to be talking about how to make a Naked Hero 9 for around under $300. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking a uh, newer used GoPro Hero 9. I uh, got this one for about $225 on Mercari. It was brand new in the box. Uh, and we need two other parts. Uh, these are the uh, Nameless RC Naked Hero 9 and 10 case, as well as the Naked 9 and 10 BEC. First thing we need to do before we get go any further is we need to go ahead and put make sure your camera is updated to the latest firmware and also put the GoPro Labs firmware on the camera as well. All right, now uh, before we get started, I'm going to put a list of tools that I use on this uh, project here on screen. Uh, so just take a look at it. Uh, if you do need anything specific, I'll have links down in the description of where you can pick those up. Um, first start off, I am going to be using a Dremel tool. Uh, if you don't have a Dremel tool, you can use other items to open the case, um, such as a... Uh, any serrated knife would work if you're careful with it, um, but a Dremel tool with a diamond cutoff wheel, which looks like this, works best. Another nice thing to have handy as we start doing this is a uh, heat gun. What we're going to do is we're going to be uh, heating up the perimeter of this uh, camera, and then you can see there is a groove right around the perimeter of the back screen uh, right here. Um, we are going to go ahead and cut on that line, but it helps cutting through if the plastic is slightly warm. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Uh, so before we get started further, obviously you wanna go ahead and take out your battery. You can also take your battery door off, uh, remove your SD card at this time. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all the uh, protective plastic that came on my camera on there just so I don't scratch anything. I am going to try to save this rear screen in case I ever need to hook it up again. Uh, so that's always nice to have in case you need to plug it in and get to it for any certain reason. All right, before we uh, go ahead and start cutting, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, fingers, the mounting fingers here off the bottom. Uh, this is a T5 uh, screwdriver. Uh, and there are four T5 screws that you need to remove here off the bottom. This will just make things easier, keep these out of the way. We will need it off eventually anyway to be able to get the battery tray and a couple other items out on the inside a little bit later. All right, and then that whole thing should come right off. All right, now we're uh, at the point where we can go ahead and start applying heat to the perimeter of this. Now this is something you don't have to do, especially if you're working with a Dremel. Uh, if you are working with hand tools to get this uh, screen off, then it is a little bit easier if you have heat applied. All right, so now that everything's heated up, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the corners with the Dremel. Now you can actually see that I've already I started to barely see daylight through there. Uh, so that's exactly where we want to be all the way around the edge. Now we've gotten all the way around with it, this edge back by the battery door is actually probably the hardest of them all. Uh, but just take your time, be careful, stay right on that plastic, lip, plastic to rubber lip uh, and you should be okay. Alright, so now that we've worked our way all the way around it, you can kind of see we've just skimmed the very edge all the way down through. We didn't want to go all the way down. Uh, all the way to the screen. But now that we've done that, we're going to hit it. We're going to hit it with heat one more time, and then uh, slowly pry it off. 
try it one more time. We should be getting pretty close. There it goes. All right, now you want to make sure you don't just pull this off because you do have several ribbon cables in here. And I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. Here's your two ribbon cables. Just carefully pop those off. You can just use your fingers. All right, and then this is just sticky tape. You don't have to worry. This is like a uh, grounding tape. You don't have to worry about that. But there's our screen. We are going to save that for later. All right, so now that the hardest part's out of the way, now it's time to start removing screws. Uh, we're gonna proceed with a Phillips head screwdriver. It's a fairly small screwdriver that you'll need. Um, so to start, we're gonna remove this screw down in here. You see there's two holes for them here and here. Uh, there are also a handful of screws around the perimeter. Uh, and then there's also this screw right here. We're just gonna go ahead and remove all of those at this time. Our first goal to, is to get the uh, battery tray out and these few screws here hold the battery tray in. Alright, so those three screws hold the battery tray. Um, and just be careful pulling the battery tray out the back here. It is still plugged into the main board. Uh, you'll see that here in a second when I get this the rest of the way out. All right, so there is the plug right there for the main board, or for the power into the main board. We just go ahead and that will lift straight up. Oops, there it goes. All right, and all this grounding tape, we can go ahead and take that off. We don't need any of that. All right, and then we have a series of one screw here, one screw here, and one screw right here that we're going to go ahead and take out now. All right. Now this uh, clear plastic piece should come off. Oh. All right, so next up we need to go ahead and loosen all the ribbon cables for the that are connected to the main board. Uh, you'll have one here, you'll have one here, here, uh, you'll have one over here, and then you'll have the main one for the lens here. We just wanna make sure that those are all off, and then uh, we'll go on a hunt for additional screws. Uh, to remove these, you can just, um, preferably with something not metal. I've done this a lot of times, so it's not a big deal, but um, just, Pop those up. There's that one. There's that one. All right, and then there's the one for the main lens. Pull this out of the way. Just very careful with these ribbons. All right, under here you will see another couple connectors, uh, ribbon connectors. There's one right here in the very corner, right there. And then this one right here, this will just lift up. All right, before we go too much further, uh, we do need to go ahead and get this bottom speaker out of the way. That's gonna help us get that. There we go. Oop, and I see one screw that I missed. I always miss this screw. It's because it's hiding underneath the USB-C. All right. So now that that's out of there, we should we don't need to remove the top button and all the GPS and stuff in the top. Um, we can leave that in there for now, but now we can go ahead and start oops, trying to pry that out. There we go. So we got that corner lifted up. Uh, just be careful here um, because you do need to sneak it by, by here and then get it around the lens module. Uh, one thing uh, to help get this board out, you'll fiddle with it a lot, but if you go ahead and just remove this, this is going to help a whole lot. 
uh, this is one of the speakers. Um, that really frees up this lower corner. Uh, you'll probably notice a lot of people fight with this um, if they do a teardown video on this, I'm doing this for other reasons. Um, but that really frees up this corner. And then you really want to just rotate this out. It's kind of tough getting it around all of these items down here. You've got a couple ribbon cables in the way. Again, just take your time and uh, and it will eventually come out. This is probably the second hardest part about the whole disassembly, um, except for cutting the front screen off. Or the back screen, sorry. All right, then once you finally get this corner right here up, this back small corner, you should be on the home stretch. It's just a matter of wiggling it and jiggling it just the right way to be able to angle it right out of there. All right, and there it is. All right. We will set that aside, definitely need that piece. All right, so last thing we need to do, we need to get this lens module out. Uh, there are a series of three screws. There's a black one over here, and then there's a silver one here, and another silver one kind of tucked underneath this ribbon cable. Um, so again, we are using the uh, T5 screwdriver. There's one of them. And then here is another one. And then this last one, it can be a little tricky to get out because it is kind of at an angle, but usually you can get it okay. All right, and there is the last one. Uh, now our lens module should just rotate out of here. All right, and there is our lens module. Be careful not to scratch your lens, obviously. And there you go. All right, so next up, we're gonna go ahead and take the button assembly off the top that also contains GPS. Uh, there are a series of four total Phillips head screws. Uh, some people choose not to remove this. I like to remove it just because it makes getting the front screen out a little bit easier. Some of these screws are a little difficult to get to because you do have to get to them at an angle. Alright. This one especially. And once that comes out, this button assembly should come right off. You do have some grounding tape on that, just don't worry about that. And there that is. All right, we do need to take the front cover off. I'm gonna go ahead and take this ring off. I believe this is back to our torque. All right, so that is a T4. All right, so now that comes off. Now, the next thing you need to do, there's actually some um, kind of plastic rivets in here. In order to get this uh, screen assembly off, you need to go ahead and uh, trim those off. You can either do it with an X-Acto or a utility knife. Um, just kind of scrape at them. Just don't cut yourself. There's some right back in here. Just cut those off. Just be careful not to damage your screen. This is the back of the screen right here. Missing one more screw here. And another one on the other side. This helps hold this whole mounting plate in. Once these guys are out. Alright, no 
those plastic rivets still aren't quite all the way off. I'm just going to trim them with some side cutters and get them the rest of the way off. Alright, that should do it. Alright, and there it goes. Alright, so that is our screen module. Now for this next part, uh, to get the screen off, sometimes just a little bit of heat, this mild heat, will actually help uh, loosen the glue on the screen. Uh, you can also use a little bit of isopropyl rubbing alcohol uh, just down in the uh, edges, but usually just a little bit of heat. So this is just isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I'm just going to put a dab of it right in there. You don't want too much. You don't want to break that screen, just nice and slow. And put another couple of drops of ice rubbing alcohol down in there. There it is. Alright, so now after a little bit of cleanup, we're left with three pieces that we need. We have the lens module, the main board, and the front LCD. Uh, now we'll go ahead and get into the Nameless RC kit. Uh, in the kit you have a back piece and a front piece, as well as the screen holder. And then you have a bag of hardware. And then in the other one, in the BEC module, container you have the BEC itself. Underneath you have the power cable. Those power cables we do sell on our website if you don't have one. They are a little bit different than a standard uh, uh, SH connector. So, um, And then we have the ribbon cable. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do, we need to go ahead and install the screen first. That is the very first thing. Uh, so the screen goes in face down just like that. And then we feed the ribbon cable through this hole right here. And being careful not to dislodge the screen, we just clip in these two clips, just like so. And there is our ribbon cable right there. All right, after that front screen's installed, it's time to go ahead and install the lens module. Uh, the lens module goes in this orientation and it should line up perfectly with that. Uh, now you can use the original screws that came with the GoPro, or they did include uh, some M1.4 screws. So I've seen some people say that after they um, they put their lens module in place. They actually can reuse the uh, screws that they took out of the original spot uh, from the GoPro. And I find that just those don't bite very well. So I recommend actually using the screws in the kit. Uh, so those are M1.4 by three. I'll go ahead and dump all this out here. I'll show you which ones. All right, so we should have four. Or actually, I think we have a total of five of those. And these are a Phillips. So we have, we put in these three first. See, these will actually bite the other ones that uh, you took off your GoPro. They don't bite very well. I think the one's a machine, a finer thread, and this one's a coarser thread that bites into the plastic a little better. And then the one underneath the ribbon cable. All right. So there's those three. Uh, next up, we are going to go ahead and install the uh, motherboard. So you got to make sure that this cable for the front screen is up out of the way. 
So again, using uh, the same M1.4 uh, by three millimeter screws, we're gonna put in this screw here. Uh, we're gonna put in this screw here. And we're going to put in this screw right up here. So there's a total of three more. So here's screw number one. All right, and then we have another, oops, got too many. Another M1.3 or M1.4 by three here. And then lastly, we've got one more of those right up here. All right, now we can go ahead and connect our front screen. That goes right here. You just kind of feel it until it lines up. It kind of give you an outline there to line it up as well, which is nice. All right, that snapped into place. All right, before we install the uh, ribbon cable for the lens module, we need to go ahead and install this, uh, the ribbon cable that came with the BEC. Uh, it connects actually to three different points on the main board. It connects to this point right here, and then this point right here, and then this point all the way over here. So we'll start off by aligning the big one here at the bottom first. Again, you don't force these. They should line up. If it's not clicking into place, then you don't have it lined up right. Okay, so that one's clicked into place. Go ahead and get this one over here. All right, that one's good. This one, for some reason, is always tough for me to find. So you'll notice that the cable doesn't lay flat and that's normal. That's kind of why it is a little bit harder to line these up sometimes. Um, but now uh, this last portion of the cable, uh, this is actually going to fold back and go and plug into the BEC, which is going to stick to this little uh, area right here. All right, so here's our BEC. All right, the BEC goes in in this orientation. And there's, there's little feet down here at the very bottom to help you line that up. So you just kind of smash it in the bottom corner here. And then we'll stick it in place. So there is some double-sided tape on here, some 3M tape. Remove that. Stick this all the way down in that bottom corner. Make sure it's pushed both ways. And just light pressure to seat that. All right, now before we slide this ribbon uh, cable in, there is a black retainer, uh, retaining clip on either side of this that you do need to slide out. You can usually just use your fingers for that. You can see it's pulled out now. Now that will easier uh, slide in. Oops. All right, and you slide that guy in there until it's fully seated. And then you just push this retaining clip back into place. All right, and there that is. Uh, now, last thing we need to do before we button this up, 
Um, we need to go ahead and reinstall the ribbon cable for the lens module. Uh, just you got to be careful with the new ribbon cable we put in there. This one can be a little bit tricky. All right, now that's on there. This grounding tape you don't need to worry about. You can just kind of push it down, it's fine. Now they do give you soldering pads uh, for your record ground and battery. Um, if you are like me, you might find this out later after you've used this kit for a while. Um, I don't particularly like how hard it is to put this plug in into here through the side of the case. You might want to solder in an external connector. Um, I've done that in the past. Uh, you just solder on the ground and battery and uh, just have a little pigtail come out that you can plug in. So that's uh, optional up to you. Uh, last thing we need to do, we need to go ahead and button it up. Uh, so we just put the back case on. So the last thing we need to do is get the last six screws in. These are the M1.4 by 10 millimeter screws. There are six of them, uh, one in each corner and two in the middle. I don't like to normally screw these all the way in until we get them all aligned. All right, and then go around and just tighten these last up just a little bit. All right, and that is good to go. We'll put our memory card back in. All right, now for the moment of truth. Uh, I've went ahead and soldered up a cable uh, that has a balance lead on one end and then a uh, just the regular connector on the other end for the nameless RC BEC. And here we go, see if it works. All right, there was a red flash. That's a good sign. That means the BEC is powered. All right, powered on. All right, we got the logo on the front. Let's go ahead and see if we can record. All right, that looks good. Now we'll go ahead and make sure that QR codes are currently working. So again, QR control, we will, it got a flash. It should start recording automatically again. There it goes. So QR codes are working as well. All right, you can switch through modes with the power button just like you would normally. So I just wanted to do a real quick weight comparison between the cameras. This is a original, uh, un, obviously unmodified GoPro Hero 9. We are at 160 grams. This is the new Hero 10 Black Bones and that should weigh right at 60 grams. Yep. And Finally, our newly modified Naked Hero 9 with the Nameless RC kit. Oops. We are at 32.87 grams. So that's it for this tutorial on how to make your own Naked GoPro. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, consider hitting that thumbs up button. It's greatly appreciated. Also consider subscribing. All products used in today's video are linked down in the description below. Some of them are affiliate links. We do get a small commission for you using those. We appreciate your support. So that's it. Film safe, fly safe, and bye for now.